In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics of DNA replication. This is going to be the first of two videos. Uh, in this one, we will be talking about the initiation process. Uh, and then in the second video, we're going to be talking primarily about the role of DNA polymerase and DNA ligase. Now, before we get into detail, what I wanted to bring up is the concept that the replication of DNA is what we call semi conservative. And what we mean by this is that each of the um, strands, so if this top one, this is my five prime and three prime, uh, let's see, where are we? Uh, three prime end for that, and then five prime and three prime for the second strand. Each of these two strands here is going to serve as a template for replication. So what's going to happen is that these two strands are going to unwind from each other, and what we're going to find eventually, uh, if we kind of draw this out, is that one of the strands becomes a template to make a second strand of DNA in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And so one of the newly synthesized fragments will pair with, an, with a, a, I guess you could call it a mother strand of DNA or a template of DNA, and that's going to happen with the other as well. And so if this is our 3 prime one, our 5 prime end here, then our new strand again is going to be made in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction of that newly synthesized DNA. And so what semi-conservative replication basically says is that each of the parent strands that are shown in white here are going to serve as a template to make a new DNA sequence. Now let's take a little bit of a look at this process of replication, and, and we're going to talk about in a minute this replication fork, but before we get here, uh, what I'd like to do is draw out for you what's going to happen at what we call the origin of replication. Um, so the origin of replication is a sequence of DNA, and it's usually got a specific sequence. Um, and that sequence of DNA is unique to every organism. Now in humans, we have multiple origins of replication. That's kind of true for all eukaryotes. Bacteria, on the other hand, only have one origin of replication known as the ORIC. And so um, the ORIC is where replication would begin, and in bacteria it ends at what's known as a terminator or a TER sequence. Now, the first couple of things that are going to happen at this origin of replication is you're going to get a docking of some different protein complexes here. Um, but one of the most important proteins that docks at this location is known as helicase. And helicase is an enzyme that essentially unwinds DNA. So what we're going to find is that if we now draw our DNA kind of like a ladder like this, just to simplify the image, what we're going to find is a bubble of replication that begins at the origin of replication. And that bubble is going to increase in size in both directions from that origin. And what we're going to find is that what's creating this bubble here, or this region of single-stranded DNA, is the helicase. And so our helicases are located here, at what we call a replication fork, and right here as well, which we call the second replication fork. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this process here. And what we're going to draw out is um, this replication fork, as you can see. Before we get into detail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure to label my three prime end and my five prime ends of DNA for both of these strands. And this directionality is going to become pretty important later on. Um, and we should probably draw in our helicase real quick too. Recall that this helicase is the enzyme. Uh, it's essentially moving in the direction of, of double-stranded DNA, and it's breaking the base pairs uh, or the hydrogen bonds that hold the base pairs together. And so that again is our helicase. Now the other enzymes in this process 
are going to, or other proteins in this process, are going to include a protein known as single-stranded binding protein, or SSBP. And SSBP, as the name implies, is going to bind single-stranded DNA, and it prevents that single-stranded DNA from base pairing back to itself. Um, and this SSBP protein is going to stay attached to the DNA until it's removed by DNA polymerase or by primase. Uh, and so that takes us to the next role player in this process, and that is the enzyme primase. Primase is um, an RNA polymerase or a modified RNA polymerase, and what it makes is short RNA primers that are complementary to a DNA sequence. And so um, and I've drawn my arrow here in the wrong direction, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that a little bit real quick. There we go. So our primer would bind here, working from the 5' prime to 3' prime direction of the new strand of DNA that's going to be made. And then we're going to get the same thing up here as well, but now it's going to be in the opposite direction. Again, 5 to 3 prime. So these primers are really important because without them, DNA polymerase can't actually begin the process of replication. Um, DNA polymerase is going to need not only a primer for replication to begin, but it's also going to be, need what we call a template of DNA. And you can see on both of these strands now, we have not only a primer, but templates available for that process of replication.